On the very first day of middle school, I remember being terrified and overwhelmed by the newness of the faces in the environment. At lunch, 10 of my new friends and I all squeezed together at a table that only sat six. The teachers, noticing this pattern, announced over the loudspeakers, six students at a big table and four students at a small table. Suddenly, the room went silent, every student all awkwardly and nervously looking at each other, seeing who would move first. This whole ordeal turned into an exhausting game of musical chairs. The bell would ring, we would all dart down nine flights of stairs and compete for a seat at one of these tables. The teachers would actually come over and make us go move to sit alone. So flash forward three grades in a new school later, I found myself in my freshman homeroom when I overheard a conversation between my homeroom teacher and an unfamiliar classmate. I realized that this girl had been sitting behind me for the whole year, but I didn't know her name, let alone anything about her. I made the incorrect assumptions that simply because she wore a hijab and always sat quietly, that she didn't speak English. Now something was missing. I was politically active, I campaigned, I knocked on doors, I believed in equality and inclusion, but I wasn't actually living it. So I approached this girl and I learned her name was Khaula. And in addition to learning her name, I learned of her incredible story of refuge from Syria. We began speaking every day, and I now had this new friend, one who is so kind, so warm, so diligent and smart. I went to her birthday party we shared in our culture and music. Our friendship enriched both of our lives, and I couldn't but help but think of the other unfamiliar classmates I was missing out on, and who my peers were missing out on. I deeply regretted not meeting Khaula sooner. I missed out on so many months of laughter, kindness, and friendship. Regret must come with action. Khaula shared with me her negative experience in high school thus far. She uh, faced several instances of cultural intolerance and discrimination, and it wasn't good enough for me to just put my arm around her and say, it's gonna be okay. What about the other students facing these experiences? How could we turn those into good ones? There are 4.9 million English as a second language students in the United States. That makes up approximately 10% of every student body. What about them? I had to not only put my arm around Khaula, but around the community and the student body, not just to comfort, but to change the experience that they faced. I brainstormed with my English as a second language classmates. How can we create more friendships like Khaula and mine? Two innovative teachers lent their room for a think tank. The conversations I was lucky enough to have with my English as a second language classmates changed me forever. I learned of their rich culture, experience, and knowledge, but also their pain and unimaginable struggles. There was Isra who fled Iraq from Al-Qaeda to Syria to flee Syria from ISIS to Alderdice High School to be a scientist who can and will change the world. There's Valeria who came from a struggling Venezuela, a passionate lover of physics and pigs. There's Alexis from the Philippines, Sarah from Saudi Arabia, Uliana from the Ukraine. They can make anybody smile. Puya from Iran, uh, Albra from Saudi Arabia, two of the kindest guys I've ever met who defy all stereotypes. Daniela, a first generation uh, American whose parents are from Serbia and Macedonia. Truly the smartest person I have ever met. And each unique student had something important to share. I needed to hear these stories. My classmates needed to hear these stories. The world needed to hear these stories. And I didn't realize it at the time, but through those conversations, I was humanizing the meaning of immigrant and refugee in my brain. I grew up in a liberal household, and I believed in accepting immigrants and refugees, but I was never in a space where I could develop an educated opinion based upon real people. In order to develop the next generation of leaders, voters, and Americans, we must humanize issues, talk to communities, and listen to their stories. And with this group of brave and amazing students, I helped develop an outlet to do just that. We developed an after-school program called Global Minds. Global Minds bridges native English-speaking students and English as a second language students through activities about human rights, diversity, sustainable development, and international relations. 
That's all paired with conversational English practice to act as an educational support system for ESL students and to better educate native English speaking students in order to create more globally minded young leaders. So what does that look like? Khaula and I are paired up and through our intercultural friendship, I'm overcoming stereotypes and discrimination and she can receive homework help or support navigating that, the school system. And through that connection, we're becoming the next generation of globally minded young leaders. Over the next year, we engage students from 25 different countries who speak 16 different languages and over 30 hours of 100% student-led programming. We painted a mural at the Wilkins Community Center representing immigration and unity, illustrating our stories with a local artist. We went to the Islamic Center of Pittsburgh, had an experiential learning day, talked to their executive director, ate lunch with their community, went to their call to prayer, and overcame Islamophobia head on. We plastered the walls of Alderdice High School with posters representing countries typically portrayed negatively in the media. We had a global potluck, shared food, danced, honored each other, and invited our families to do the same. We developed global friendships. We talked about current events. We experienced the Trump administration's first travel ban. We smiled, we laughed, we cried, because that ban did in fact impact our students. We developed empathy and compassion so we could not only support each other as neighbors, but as friends. And suddenly the most important part of the program began to shine through. As students were developing intercultural friendships, they started gaining confidence. And the power went from me solely leading meetings to students volunteering, stepping up, saying I wanna take a part in this. And Pittsburghers, teenagers, started making a change in our community which can now be reflected all throughout the world. And the word got out about it. We appeared on the Today Show. We shared our stories in the New York Times and the Pittsburgh Coast Gazette. We emphasized the importance of student voice in Teen Vogue. And teachers and students from all across the country and the world started reaching out. How can we start this program in our community? And we could have never imagined the magnitude of those requests teachers and students in every community, communities we didn't even know existed, started reaching out. The social and academic disconnect between native English speaking students and English as a second language students was apparent in every community. We responded to those requests with a 100% student-led curriculum, the resources, guidance, and platform for them to start this program at their school. Now with over 450 students across, across six states, 11 schools, and three countries, I now help lead a movement of kindness, inclusivity, and welcoming. Everything from grant writing to program development to tax forms, which are very hard by the way, are done by passionate and compassionate youth. Khaula and I sat every morning freshman year doing math, science, history homework, and at the beginning, we were strangers, bonding over our disinterest in the quadratic formula and photosynthesis. But as the year went on, we grew together, and she taught me the power of education. Khaula shared with me one morning this year that she didn't think she could be a lawyer because someone told her it would be too hard, simply because she wore a hijab. Now, I was very upset at this, so I took out my phone and I Googled Muslim lawyers, and um, tons of people showed up that just looked like her. Now, think about that. A human being looking in Khaula's eyes and saying, you can't. Now, Khaula will be whatever she wants to be because Khaula is incredible. And being incredible doesn't come from the color of your skin or whatever you wear on your head. It comes from your heart. And Khaula has one of those like none other. Khaula changed my life. Life is exclusive. It's all about being chosen, being selective. But it's essential to our humanity that we create spaces for everyone, especially in high school. We started Global Minds on Tuesday at Alderdice for our second year, and we had 84 students show up. That is a very big space. That is a very long table, but it's worth pulling up a couple chairs, scooching together to make sure everyone fits. We can all learn from each other. Conversations change minds, and changed minds change the world. So let me bring it back to my story about middle school. You know the kid that didn't always have a seat at the table? A lot of times I was that kid. I know how it feels. 
And at some point in your life, you have felt that pain of exclusion or longing to belong. You know how it feels. So the next time you're in the lunchroom, whether that applies to your adult life or if you're still in high school, I invite you to come sit with me at the table for everyone. Thank you.